Hello everyone, I am Reggie Dawson. Welcome to the Angular 2 routing course for Tuts Plus. Now that we have created our app and built the components that will make up the user interface, now it is time to add our routing. Understand that it is possible to build a full app in Angular 2 without routing. So if we can do this, why do we need routing at all? The main reason is that if we don't use routing, our app will depend solely on navigation through program control. We will have to switch out components based on user interaction, such as when they click on something. With routing, we will be able to navigate by switching URLs. All components will map to a route allowing us to easily move around our app. Now, if you have watched any of my previous courses on Angular 2, the router has changed since then. The original version of the router has been deprecated in favor of the new component router. They aren't that much different in how we configure them, so it should be easy to pick up if you have used the deprecated version. First, in order to make routing work, we need to add a base href in the head of our index.html file. Now previously, we would configure our routes inside of the component that hosts them. In this case, this would mean that we add our route configs to our app.component file. With the new router, it is suggested that we create our route configuration in a separate file. Let's create a file called app.routes.ts in the root of the app folder. The first thing we will add to this file are the imports. First, we grab provide router and router config from the Angular router. Then I import the about, error, and home components from the pages folder. We need to import these so that we can route to these components. The next thing we will do is add our route config to hold our routes. Here we are using a const declaration. This is one of the ways we can declare a variable in TypeScript and it represents a value that cannot be changed. In this case, we are using it to hold our router config. Now the first thing we will add is a redirect. In a moment, we will add a wildcard route for our error page. This by itself will cause our app to start from the error page. The reason is that when our app starts, it doesn't have a route. Therefore, we need to specify a component as the default route. We could easily add the component we want to start our app to the empty route, but the suggested way to handle this is with the redirect. Now the redirect has to come first or it will not work properly. First we have our path, which is an empty route. This is the route our app will launch with. Then we have our redirect, which will change our path to home when it encounters an empty route. After that, we have our path match. I won't go into much detail except to say that this causes the empty route to match the redirect. Then we have our route that points at the about component. The path is set to about, which is what we will see in the address bar when we navigate to this route. The component that will be navigated to is the about component. After that, we have the home component. The path is home and the component to launch is the home component. This is the route that we will navigate to from the redirect. Then the last route we will add is a wildcard route. This will match any routes that we have not defined. This is also why we added the redirect. If we didn't, our app would start at this route since we start from a route that is not defined, an empty route. After adding the redirect, any route that we type that doesn't exist will get our error page. Then we export another const using the provide router method from Angular Router. We use the routes that we configure with this method. Once we do that, our routes are finished. The last thing we have to do is add routing to our app. Go to the main.ts file. The first thing we will do in this file is import the my router providers from our app routes file that we created. Then we have to add it to our bootstrap function. Now we have to add the routes here in our bootstrap. Adding them here has the benefit of making the routes available to all of the components in our app. Once we do that, we are finished setting up our routes. So far we have configured our routes and added them to our bootstrap function. Now we just need to configure our app component to host our routes. If we go to app.component.ts, we will first import our router directives. We have seen this before when a component needs to use the router link. This component will use router link and another directive of Angular 2, router outlet. After that, we will remove the template and add a backtick to make it a template string. This will allow us to create a multi-line template. First, we will add a div for our bootstrap navbar. Now this inverse navbar will appear on every page since it is part of the template. Then inside the navbar, we will add a brand. Now this can be text or an image and it represents the branding of your app. Then we add an unordered list. Inside, we will add our links for our navbar. In our links, instead of a URL to navigate to, we have router link. This is how we navigate to a route under user interaction. Here we are set to navigate to the home route when we click this button. We can also write the router link in another form inside of an array. We normally do this when we need to supply more information to our route. We will see this in a later video. Then we also have a router link active directive which will apply the menu class to the link when the route is active. We are using these to display a visual cue as to what page we are on. Then we will add another router link that navigates to the about page. 
Then we will add the router outlet directive. This is why the components do not need a selector. When they are loaded through routing, this directive will host the components. While the rest of this template will appear static on each page, the router outlet will change based on what route is navigated to. The last thing we need to do in this file is add the router directives. After that, the last thing we need to do is add a CSS rule to the style.css file. This rule is for the class that will be applied when the route attached to the router link is active. The background of the link will be the color white. After that, routing is configured for our app. Go ahead and save the project and run npm start in the project folder. If everything was done correctly, the app should compile and then launch from our web browser. If you notice, the home link background is shaded in white. This is because this is the active route. Then if we click on the About button, or the button in the Jumbotron, we should go to the About page. After that, let's type a non-existent route into the address bar. When we do that, we should get an error page. We now have routing working in our app, but there is so much more we can do with it. In the next video, we will build a service that will provide data to the feature area we are about to build.